The Bradley Fighting Vehicle is an American fighting vehicle platform manufactured by BAE Systems Land and Armaments, formerly United Defense. It was named after U.S. General Omar Bradley. The Bradley is designed to transport infantry or scouts with armor protection, while providing covering fire to suppress enemy troops and armored vehicles. There are several Bradley variants, including the M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle and the M3 Bradley Cavalry Fighting Vehicle. The M2 holds a crew of three as well as six fully equipped soldiers. The M3 mainly conducts scout missions and carries two scouts in addition to the regular crew of three, with space for additional tow missiles. The Red River Army Depot in Texarkana, Texas is the site center of industrial technical excellence for the maintenance and repair of the Bradley system. Design The Bradley was developed largely in response to the Soviet BMP family of infantry fighting vehicles and to serve as both an armored personnel carrier and a tank killer. One specific design requirement was that it should be as fast as the then new M1 Abrams main battle tank so that they could maintain formations while moving. Armament The M2, M3, S primary armament is a 25mm cannon that fires up to 200 rounds per minute and is accurate up to 2,500 meters. Depending on the ammunition used, it is also armed with twin missile launchers for tow anti-tank missiles. The missiles, capable of destroying most tanks out to a maximum range of 3,750 meters, can only be fired while the vehicle is stationary. The Bradley also carries a coaxial 7.62 mm medium machine gun located to the right of the 25 mm chain gun. Primary the Bradley is equipped with the M242 25mm chain gun as its main weapon. The M242 has a single barrel with an integrated dual feed mechanism and remote feed selection. The gun contains ammunition and two ready boxes of 70 rounds and 230 rounds each for a total of 300 ready rounds and carries 600 rounds in storage or 1200 stowed rounds. The two ready boxes allow a selectable mix of rounds, such as the M791A PDST Tracer and m 792 t Tracer rounds. The Tungsten APDST rounds proved highly effective in Desert Storm, being capable of knocking out many Iraqi vehicles including several kills on T-55 tanks. There have even been reports of kills against Iraqi T-72 tanks at close range. Subsequent ammunition developments resulted in the M919 APFSDST round, which contains a fin-depleted uranium penetrator similar in concept to armor-piercing munitions used in modern tanks. The M919 was used in combat during the 2003 invasion phase of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Secondary, it is also armed with an M240C machine gun mounted coaxially to the M242, with 2,200 rounds of 7.62 mm ammunition. For engaging heavier targets, the Bradley has a tow missile system on board, which was changed to fire tow 2 missile from the M2A1 model onwards. M2 infantry Bradleys also have firing ports for a number of M231 firing port weapons, providing a means for the occupants to fire from within the vehicle and replacing the top side gunners on the M113 based armored cavalry assault vehicles. Though the M231 is rarely employed, initial variants had six ports, but the side ones were platted over with the new armor configuration on the A2 and A3 variants, leaving only the two rear-facing mounts in the loading ramp. No versions of the M3 CFV carry firing port weapons, though early versions had all six firing port mounts fitted and platted over, while newer versions retain the two ramp-mounted firing ports, though again platted over, countermeasures the use of aluminum armor and the storage of large quantities of ammunition in the vehicle initially raised questions about its combat survivability. 
spaced laminate belts and high hardness steel skirt have been added to improve the side protection of later versions. Although this increases overall weight to 33 tons, in friendly fire incidents in Desert Storm, many crew members survived hits that resulted in total losses for lighter U.S. Marine Corps LAV-25 vehicles. All versions are also equipped with two four-barreled smoke grenade launchers on the front of the turret for creating defensive smoke screens, and can also be loaded with chaff and flares. Bradley Urban Survival Kit The Bradley Urban Survival Kit is an upgrade similar to the M1 Abrams Tusk Kit. It decreases the vulnerability of Bradley's in urban threat environments. The kit includes a more powerful spotlight, a wire mesh protector to keep the optics from getting scratched and non-conductive arched strips of nylon that push away fallen electrical wires that would endanger crews a remote-controlled 5.56mm machine gun on the turret, additional armor on the underside, and a bullet-resistant transparent shield for the commander outside the turret. It also includes sensors and a software package to quickly detect when components are wearing out and simulation software so that the gunners could train more realistically. The bus kit adds 3 tons to the vehicle's weight. Because of this, a major upgrade was planned. Additional upgrades included a stronger 800 horsepower engine, a larger main gun, lighter armor, improved sensors and cameras to give a 360 degree view outside, and an improved fire extinguisher system. This system was supposed to enter service in 2012, but the Bradley simply became too heavy and the kit did not make it survivable enough. A newer Busk 3 kit is now available for Bradley's incorporating a blast-proof fuel cell, a blast-resistant driver seat, a turret survivability system, and an emergency ramp release. This kit was recently installed on 236 M2A3 Bradley's in South Korea and is scheduled next to be added to Bradley's of the 4th Infantry Division. Mobility The Bradley is highly capable in cross-country open terrain, in accordance with one of the main design objectives of keeping pace with the M1 Abrams main battle tank. The Bradley was initially designed to float by deploying a flotation curtain around the vehicle, allowing it to swim at a speed of 4.5 miles per hour. Later armor upgrades have negated this capability. History Development One of the early issues that drove the development of the IFV was the need to have a vehicle that could serve in a high-intensity conflict in Europe which was feared might include the use of NBC weapons. To work in such an environment, an IFV would have to have a life support system that protected from outside contaminants while allowing the soldiers to fight from inside the vehicle. The earliest specification, from 1958, called for a vehicle of no more than 8 tons. Mounting a turret with a 20mm autocannon and a 7.62mm machine guns with sealed firing ports for five infantry gunners. The first U.S. Army IFV design was the XM734, a modified version of the M113. A commander's cupola and passenger firing ports were added. The second design was the XM-765 Armored Infantry Fighting Vehicle, based on the M113A1 chassis. The upper sides of the vehicle were sloped and spaced steel armor plates were added to improve protection. In addition, firing ports for the passengers were added and a M139 20mm cannon was added to the commander's cupola. In 1963, the US and West German governments began work on the MBT-70 design and an IFV companion project was the mechanized infantry combat vehicle. The contract was handed to the Pacific Car and Foundry Company which delivered the XM701 prototype in 1965. The prototypes had the following characteristics. 
Weight of 25 to 27 tons, 425 HP diesel engine, a two-man turret with a 20 mm gun and 7.62 mm MG, crew of three plus nine infantry equipped with firing ports, a built-in toilet, armor that was proof against Soviet 14.5 mm MG fire beyond a certain range, a collective and overpressure CBR system, amphibious. The filtration system provided a sheer sleeve environment until the passengers dismounted. After that they could not repressurize without fear of contamination, but they could plug their suits into the vehicle's filtration system. The vehicle was 9 feet high, 20 feet long, and 10 feet wide. After testing, the vehicle was criticized for its poor mobility and excessive weight and size it could not be carried aboard a C-130 or a C-141 Starlifter. New specifications were written in 1965. In 1967, the public display of the BMP-1 caused additional interest in the MICV-70 program, which concluded its studies in 1968. However, continued disagreements on specifications continued to slow down development. At this time, the Army looked at two alternate vehicles that could be fielded more quickly. The FMC company had developed an IFV version of the M113, which had a one-man turret mounting a 25mm gun, a sealed environment, and firing ports. The vehicle weight was 15 tons. The U.S. Army rejected it due to limited mobility, which would have prevented it from keeping pace with the proposed MBT-70. However, the design was purchased by the Dutch and Belgian governments. The other alternate vehicle was the West German Marder, which mounted a 20mm autocannon, two 7.62mm MGs, a relatively strong steel armor, and full CBR protection. The U.S. Army rejected it due to it not being amphibious, too large and heavy for air transport, and too expensive. The MICV program continued on and, in 1972, a new request for proposals was issued. This was won by FMC, who began construction of the XM723 prototype, which was completed in 1973. The XM723 weighed 21 tons, had spaced aluminum armor proof against 14.5 mm fire, had a crew of 3 plus 8 infantry, firing ports for the infantry, and a one-man turret with a 20 mm gun. The commander sat inside the hull. In order to adapt the XM723 to be usable in a reconnaissance role as well as an IFV, the turret was replaced in 1976 with a two-man turret mounting a 25mm Bushmaster cannon and tow missiles. A two-man turret design put the commander in a position with a better view of the battlefield. The tow missiles would give the vehicle a strong anti-armor capability. The value of anti-tank missiles had been well established in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. There was an added political advantage in that the tow missiles made it an easier sell to Congress as it was a whole new capability not possessed by the M113. We in TRADOC decided to put the tow on the MICV because we realized that if we did not put the tow on the MICV, we would probably never have a MICV. General Dong Stari, Army Magazine, 1987. In 1977, the MICV Tabatu was renamed the XM-2. The Scout version became the XM-3. The U.S. Congress was questioning the development of the XM-2 due to the high losses incurred by BMP-1S in the 1973 war and suggested the development of a more heavily armored vehicle. The Army argued against this due to concerns about cost, weight, and development time. Almost every army you look at is ahead of the American Army as far as taking care of our infantry. The Russians are ahead of us, the German are ahead of us, the Dutch are ahead of us, the French are ahead of us, the Yugoslavians are ahead of us. Almost everybody has a better infantry vehicle than the U.S. 
army. We would have been better off in 1963 when we started to just build the MICV immediately. Are we to start over again? My guess is that if you start over again, you will have a 10% increase in effectiveness and 50% increase in cost. General William E. Dupuy, Testimony to Congress, 1977. In 1977, Congress ordered two new evaluations of the IFV program, one by the GAO and one by the Department of the Army, under General Pat Kreiser. The GAO report was critical of the XM2's height, mobility, complexity, lack of clear doctrinal use, and lack of CBR protection. Based upon this criticism the OMB deleted M2-3 funding from the budget for the 1979 financial year. In 1978, the Kreiser report asserted that the basic design was consistent with doctrine and development of an IFV with superior characteristics would be costly and pose significant developmental risks. An additional study, the IFV, CFV Special Study Group, evaluated whether an improved version of the M113 could be used instead of the M23 IFV. Their conclusion was that extensive redesign would be necessary for even marginal improvements in M113 derivatives. In October 1978, Congress reauthorized procurement funds. The XM two-thirds passed the Army Systems Acquisition Review Council Milestone II Review in 1979 and final approval for production came from the Secretary of Defense on 1 February 1980. In 1993, one of the military inspectors, Carl James G. Burton released his book The Pentagon Wars. Reformers challenged the old guard, exposing from within how the Army had falsified test results during the development. This was picked up in the satirical film The Pentagon Wars released in 1998. Production history The Bradley, named after World War II General Omar Bradley, consists of two types of vehicles, the M2 Infantry Fighting Vehicle and the M3 Cavalry Fighting Vehicle. The M3 CFV was originally planned to be named after General Jacob L. Devers, but it was decided the Bradley name would apply to both, since both vehicles are based on the same chassis. The M2 carries a crew of three and a six-man infantry squad. The M3 carries the crew of three in a two-man scout team and additional radios, tow and dragon or javelin missiles. Even after the troubled development history of the Bradley additional problems occurred after production started as described in a book by Air Force. Carl James Burton, which was adapted for the 1998 film The Pentagon Wars starring Kelsey Grammer and Carrie Ellis. Burton advocated the use of comprehensive live-fire tests on fully loaded military vehicles to check for survivability. The Army and Navy agreed and established the Joint Live-Fire Testing Program in 1984. When testing the Bradley, however, disagreements occurred between Burton and the Aberdeen Proving Grounds Ballistic Research Laboratory, which preferred smaller, more controlled, building block tests. They claimed such limited testing would improve the databases used to model vehicle survivability, as opposed to full tests with random shots that would provide a far more accurate picture of its performance under real battlefield conditions, but produce less useful statistical data. In addition, Burton insisted on a series of overmatch tests in which weapons would be fired at the Bradley that were known to be able to easily penetrate its armor, including Russian ordnance. Burton saw attempts to avoid such tests as dishonest, while the BRL saw them as wasteful, as they already knew the vehicle would fail. The disagreements became so contentious that congressional inquiry resulted. As a result of the tests, additional improvements to vehicle survivability were added. The first combat unit to be equipped with Bradleys, in March 1983, was the 1st Battalion, 41st Infantry, 2nd Armored Division. Several years later, the unit commander, LT. 
Colonel Franklin W. Tratnell, Jr., became the Army's system manager for the Bradley program. As of May 2000, a total of 6,724 Bradleys had been produced for the U.S. Army. The total cost of the program as of that date was $5.7 billion, and the average unit cost $3.2 million. Combat history during the Gulf War M2 Bradleys destroyed more Iraqi armored vehicles than the M1 Abrams. A total of 20 Bradleys were lost, 3 by enemy fire and 17 due to friendly fire incidents. Another 12 were damaged. The gunner of one Bradley was killed when his vehicle was hit by Iraqi fire, possibly from an Iraqi BMP-1, during the Battle of 73 Easting. To remedy some problems that were identified as contributing factors in the friendly fire incidents, infrared identification panels and other marking identification measures were added to the Bradleys. In the Iraq War, the Bradley proved vulnerable to improvised explosive device and rocket-propelled grenade attacks. But casualties were light with the crew able to escape. In 2006, total losses included 55 Bradleys destroyed and some 700 others damaged. By 2007, the Army had stopped using the M2 Bradley in combat, instead favoring more survivable MRAPs. By the end of the war, about 150 Bradleys had been destroyed. Replacement The U.S. Army first intended to replace the Bradley as part of the Future Combat Systems Manned Ground Vehicles Program, which started in 1999 and was cancelled in 2009. In 2010, the Army started the Ground Combat Vehicle Program to replace the Bradley with the GCV Infantry Fighting Vehicle but the GCV was cancelled in 2014. Informal discussions for the next follow-up effort have been dubbed as the Future Fighting Vehicle, but no official development has commenced. The Army is taking a measured approach to the FFV concept as they study what capabilities they want and what technologies are available in, affordable before committing to a future design. As of October 2014, it is largely a science and technology development effort to explore options while pursuing engineering change proposals for existing armored vehicles. Specific details have not been decided on, and the Army plans to decide if the FFV program will become an effort to produce actual vehicles, a potential Bradley replacement, or more improvements for the Bradley in 2016. If a clean sheet design is chosen, the FFV program could be started as early as 2019. Various science and technology projects are being studied to see if they are mature enough to be integrated onto a new vehicle, and components developed for the GCV may be worked into other designs. In May 2015, General Dynamics and BAE Systems, the two prime contractors involved with the GCV, were awarded contracts to develop design concepts for the FFV. Development of the FFV is expected to take place between 2022 and 2031.